uh, command <laughs> uh, yeah it is not there and uh, what else can we try uh, opk list usb network yeah usb network usb hyphen net uh, again it is not showing up uh, usb network usually it will show here and uh, if you check uh, install packages yeah, it is already installed you can see there usb net uh, available usb net so looks like there is some issue with this uh, you know filter option usually it should not be this <laughs> way yeah. okay uh, 8152 something like that because if this filter is not properly working in this uh, you know rock chip port it is very difficult but it's quite easy when it comes to this you know standard x86 because you know what you are expecting and uh, the image is very popular and you know many will be using it and stuff like that okay so that's the thing as you see here although here we can say usb hyphen net if i provide it kind of shows here okay kind of shows here but it should show in the available list as well which is not you know getting properly updated just a quick add-on uh, while i'm uh, editing this uh, video i thought um, i can do uh, some more uh, tests and i can just add this as a small add-on but before that i thought uh, let me do a quick fix of that uh, wi-fi uh, connectivity issue so i just uh, put a small uh, you know a bit of hot glue so that it can uh, solve this temporarily since it's an evaluation board i can't do anything further than this i can't really mount it in any um, you know enclosure or uh, get some enclosure which is compatible for that so this should do the job and with that hope you can see here i can now uh, connect to this uh, uh, wireless interface so let me connect to the same and uh, we can do an ssh like before root at 192.168.2.1 firefly yep so you can see here we can able to log in uh, like before so we can do one more quick check uh, 168.2.1 see usually i will do uh, I'll do some uh, couple of hyperf tests and uh, this will uh, really uh, help to evaluate its uh, uh, you know network uh, performance uh, and uh, whenever you do an hyperf local host to local host it is quite uh, useful because this really tells how far the stack is capable and uh, stuff like that and we can also eliminate uh, the network latency or network uh, uh, you know um, overhead and we can just test or the network hardware overheads uh, such as uh, you know ethernet port speed and stuff like that if it is one gig port you may get the hyper performance equal to one gig and if it is anything beyond that you will get something like that so we can eliminate that and this is also not any disk io bound so it's a good way to test your uh, system um, performance um, and eliminate all your other you know variables okay so we have to install hyperf so you can see here i if I type hyperf it's not going to work so we can quickly install hyperf so we see by doing this uh, update list See this is as I said it's the same as Ubuntu app get update. We can do this way or you can do in a command prompt also opkg update and it is going to do the same. And it is quite uh, easy to do in a Lucy interface rather than you fiddle around with this command prompt you know. So usually I prefer doing with you know via UI. So you can see here as soon as I did it is showing this suggestion. So so what we do is uh, we can install this uh, hyperf3 uh, yeah this is installed so looks like i need to type hyperf3 and looks like it is already installed but if you want you can also install this in this way so you can see there you can do this and install 
should get installed so let me dismiss and uh, you can see that it is installed and moreover i forgot to show you some interesting things about openwrt so go to this interfaces and you can see their lan interface is bound to this lan and you know uh, things like that and for the wan hope you saw earlier if config uh, it is attached to this interface it zero uh, but currently the lan has no wired ethernet port okay so that's what it is and uh, we can do a very quick check uh, like once again let me try uh, with this tp link uh, one last attempt uh, let me just uh, check first of all it's a driver uh, like i did before uh, i might have log kernel log so let me connect it to my uh, ubuntu laptop so capture its yeah see you can see here it is 8153 rtl 8153 so this is uh, a uh, real tech 8153a uh, controller so let's go to the software and uh, just try once 8153 yeah, it's again not coming up so we can just ignore that and uh, what we can do is uh, yeah let me just disconnect this we can ignore that and what we can do is instead of that we can also install uh, gcc okay so suppose if i come back here if i type gcc it is not going to work so if you want to compile any c applications or do any system software uh, development on top of openwrt you can also install the gcc i can uh, do an install as you can see here it is quite large it is 31 mb <laughs> so uh, you can do the same so let me do an install and this is one thing i always encourage uh, if uh, volunteers uh, wants to give their uh, you know embedded devices uh, benchmarks uh, they can do this via true bench uh, and uh, you can follow some you know guidelines which i have provided in this uh, download page there are set of instructions i have provided uh, never ever compile it unless there is a real need if it is a special board and it doesn't have any pre compiled port then you can compile it otherwise you don't need to compile because it again, again it will pollute uh, the compiled binary so instead first check if anything is compatible and if it works fine you don't need to compile otherwise you can compile as you see here after i did this uh, uh, test for this board i have released this compiled uh, you know binary compiled or ported version of that binary so that is what it is and in case if you want to compile of course you can uh, download this truebench.c uh, we can quickly download over here and uh, hopefully the gcc is installed as you see here and let me type gcc again as you see here it works fine and uh, what we do is we can do an scp to nas truebench uh, to this device 168 2.1 Yeah, so it is copied, and uh, we can see here two bench is there. PCC minus O two bench, and uh, usually you can uh, assign some uh, platform or architecture name. So we can go to this overview, and you can see here this is this RK three five six six. So we can uh, just try to give this name. to distinguish its you know architecture or we'll see let me give it in lower case firefly so this will be our binary name and you can uh, provide uh, this you know c file and you can see there the compiled binary is there okay so what we do is we can just uh, run this uh, binary and uh, so this should take a while uh, because uh, uh, the result as you can see here uh, it is uh, that fly it has taken around 551 seconds so that should be around divided by uh, 
so this has taken around 9 minutes to complete uh, okay so we can uh, wait for a while and uh, see what is the test uh, result it will uh, give out but before that i can also do this hyper test and then later i am going to do that and uh, share it on screen okay so what i can do is i can do uh, another ssh over here ssh drive and we can do this uh, you know um, iperf test so iperf now it works fine iperf 3 as well it works fine as you have seen both have been installed okay so i will do this iper minus s so this is running as a server and uh, this is going to run on this uh, tcp if you want to run on udp you can just select an option as minus u to force it uh, via udp so what we do is hyper minus c local host or you can provide 127.0.0.1 Yeah, so we got the output. Hope you can see it is able to transfer at this rate of 6.4 gigabits per second. And this is a fair amount of uh, sampling uh, uh, to evaluate its network performance. So let's imagine you connect any 10 gig, uh, uh, you know, Ethernet port or Ethernet interface. It's not going to work at that speed because the board itself is going to work at the maxes this is the performance you can get through that architecture which is the combined performance of your cpu memory and everything included so this is what is the peak network stack performance hence it is bottlenecked by this uh, you know uh, rate itself so even though you connect any let's imagine it has a standard uh, pcie interface uh, like a you know desktop sized pci interface you can never connect any you know uh, 40 gig nickards or 10 gig nickards it's never going to deliver that performance having said that you can try it with the laptop you can see that i'm opening a couple of you know um, terminals in the laptop here we do the same test hyper minus s and hyper minus c local host and it is going to give us its results and we can compare this versus that the network capabilities of its system so you can see that in the case of laptop it is able to deliver up to around 60 gig per second on average okay so this really tells that on a laptop you can even connect uh, a 40 gig uh, you know ethernet nic card um, and uh, it can able to deliver that you know performance hopefully so you can see that on average it is around uh, you know close to 60 gig per second okay so that's what it is so this way we are eliminating any kind of network um, uh, device or port uh, hardware uh, uh, you know uh, bottlenecks and we are not polluting any results see i am not doing an hyper between my laptop uh, to this you know rock chip that is going to tell the no, uh, tell a different story it is going to reveal the you know bottleneck of your underlying uh, you know hardware performance but when you do local host to local host uh, you know hyper then it is going to tell what is the peak stack performance which is you know capable in that you know uh, uh, you know system architecture or uh, you know system configuration so with this thing uh, done we can uh, once again run this true bench and uh, leave it for a while and i'm going to uh, share the screen capture once it is complete yeah so as i show here it will uh, take few minutes or few hours so it again depends so some devices i noticed it it can take even few hours like this case this is a you know a very small uh, dragino device it has taken you know few hours to complete so we can wait for a while and uh, we can come back once it is over so as you can see here it just uh, completed the same uh, in this sample it took around so and so seconds uh, 569 seconds uh, unlike uh, the earlier uh, sample in this case it took around uh, 551 seconds so i'm going to retain uh, the best sample whatever it has taken uh, from this board so we can consider somewhat like this so if we divide this 569 seconds uh, 569 divided by 60 
so it's around the same as before it's around nine uh, minutes nine and a half minutes here and there okay so that's what is this uh, board is uh, capable uh, versus if we do uh, ever a test on this uh, laptop uh, okay this is uh, uh, this is a uh, ls cpu so this laptop has this uh, processor it is a ryzen uh, yeah, 5700U. So let me see, it's a Ryzen 7. You can see there, it just completes within uh, 27 seconds. So that's what it is. So you can see there, it is at a complete different scale uh, versus these SOC boards are at a different scale. And uh, the most bottom one of this scale is uh, Raspberry Pi 2. And then you can see here, this is another scale. And these takes several minutes, even some it can uh, span across multiple hours. So that's what it is. So by this, uh, you know, it will uh, make us easy to uh, evaluate for what kind of applications we can use. Uh, we can use this uh, board for all uh, kinds of interesting applications. Like I said, the most suitable ones are, it can be used for uh, any network appliance or it can be used for any IoT applications or it can be used for any monitoring just the way you use Raspberry Pi and other than that it can be used as a, a small industrial board or it can be also used um, because since it has even this M.2 uh, storage interface so other than that it can be also possibly used as a uh, some kind of NAS device again the main advantage it has is it has this M.2 interface so things like that okay so these are the applications we can think about and uh, it is far more uh, capable than uh, you know raspberry pi uh, of course uh, the future iterations of raspberry pi is eventually going to be this uh, board so you can see there this is a pi 4 uh, maybe perhaps the next release is going to be half of this and uh, by that time you know we can expect uh, you know um, uh, crossing this uh, performance of this, uh, you know, last check. With this, uh, we end this session. If I find something interesting, perhaps I can capture another session and we can uh, go forward. So, hope you may find it interesting. And if you are very new to OpenWRT, be in touch with me. And uh, maybe perhaps in the upcoming sessions, uh, you know, we can uh, explore literally some more things and, uh, you know, uh, you can gain an expertise on this open wrt you know uh, router software or router firmware and uh, you know this will give you a lot of advantage in your career path as a network software developer or any uh, you know uh, uh, expertise in uh, network uh, protocol or stack development and stuff because end of the day this operating system is very much meant to be used as a router firmware and so many things which you do regularly in ubuntu it's lot easier to do with open wrt it's just very easy and if you have any custom stack if you want to you know automate its configuration and stuff again it is quite easy the ui is served from this path and if you go to this uh, www here you can find the lucy uh, source code and if you are uh, good with UI development, you can also explore the options and you can change, you know, things as the way you wish, okay, so that's what, as you see here, there are many soft links provided, you can go there and navigate and you can do your stuff, okay, so hope this video is useful, thanks a lot for joining me, if you have anything to discuss, uh, be in touch via mail or post your small queries in YouTube comments as well, thank you, have a nice day, bye bye.